The USS Gerald R. Ford It is the first ship of the Gerald R. Ford class, which is the U.S. Navy's new class of aircraft carriers. It was commissioned in 2017 and is named in honor of the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford. The USS Gerald R. Ford is larger, faster and more technologically advanced than previous U.S. Navy aircraft carriers. It incorporated many innovations, including a system of electromagnetic catapults to launch aircraft and an improved landing system. Of course. The laser system used for defense, including on ships like the USS Gerald R. Ford, is an innovative weapon system that uses beams of concentrated light to neutralize threats. These lasers are capable of destroying or disabling drones, missiles or other projectiles in flight. The main advantage of laser systems lies in their ability to quickly neutralize threats at great distances, with high precision and high repeatability. Unlike conventional weapons, lasers do not require physical ammunition and can fire almost unlimitedly as long as they have enough energy. These laser systems represent a significant advancement in ship defense capabilities, providing greater protection against modern and emerging threats. Besides defense against drones, laser systems have several other roles and applications. Missile defense Lasers can be used to intercept and destroy ballistic missiles, cruise missiles and other projectiles in flight, providing effective missile defense. Defense against aerial threats, lasers can be deployed to counter enemy aircraft in flight, neutralizing or shooting them down. Defense against surface threats, laser systems can also be used to protect ships against small boat attacks, suicide ships, and other surface threats. Anti-ship missile defense, lasers can be used to intercept and destroy anti-ship missiles before they reach their target, thereby enhancing the defense capability of warships. Improvised explosive device, IED, suppression, lasers can be used to disable IEDs by detecting and burning the detonators remotely. Neutralization of enemy electronic systems, lasers can be used to jam or destroy enemy electronic systems, such as radars and communication systems. In summary, laser systems offer a diverse range of defense capabilities and countermeasures to counter different threats on the modern battlefield. That's where shorter range missiles such as the evolved Sea Sparrow missile, which can be packed four per cell in a vertical launch system, and lasers can have a big impact, even if it means the ship has to let missiles get uncomfortably close to the ship before it's taken down. I think lasers could make a difference for Ford because the technology is pretty mature, you could fit it on the ship and it would address a big challenge for carriers, which is air defense, Clark said. You could put several lasers on there and really give a boost to your air defense capacity. That means Ford, with survivability questions looming over aircraft carriers, can support large, power-sucking equipment such as lasers, according to Captain J.J. Cummings, the Ford commanding officer. When you talk about innovation in the Navy, this is where it lives, Cummings said, referring to his ship. We're lighter, designed lighter, than Nimitz class. Nimitz class, she's barreling down pretty good now with a lot of stuff on her, and her electric plant is almost at maximum capacity. We're light and designed to have excess capacity in our electrical system to bring future systems on board. The new A-1B reactor, electromagnetic aircraft launch system, MALS, Advanced Arresting Gear AAG, and Dual Band Radar DBR, all offer enhanced capability with reduced manning. The Gerald R. Ford class is designed to maximize the striking power of the embarked carrier air wing. The ship systems and configuration are optimized to maximize the sortie generation rate SGR, of attached strike aircraft, 
resulting in a 33% increase in SGR over the Nimitz class. The ship's configuration and electrical generating plant are designed to accommodate new systems, including direct energy weapons, during its 50-year service life. Nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are one of the most complex machines ever made by man. The warfighting components of launching and retrieving jet aircraft make it complicated enough, but beneath the surface is a bustling city with two power plants, food services, medical facilities, waste management systems, and even desalination plants that convert seawater to fresh water. The shipbuilders at Newport News Shipbuilding who build these floating warfighters are now building the newest class of aircraft carriers, the Gerald R. Ford class. With new software-controlled electromagnetic catapults and weapons elevators, a redesigned flight deck and island, and more than twice the electrical capacity of the preceding class, these aircraft carriers are truly designed for the 21st century and beyond. The Ford class is the first new design for a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier since Nimitz, CVN-68. During the design process, the shipbuilders found hidden value in every square inch of the ship, saving the Navy a projected $4 billion in ownership costs over the ship's 50-year lifespan. Newport News Shipbuilding is the only shipyard to perform refueling and complex overhaul, RCOH, work on aircraft carriers. This massive undertaking was described in a 2002 RAND study as one of the most challenging engineering and industrial tasks undertaken anywhere by any organization. The multi-year project is performed only once during a carrier's 50-year life and includes refueling of the ship's two nuclear reactors, as well as significant repair, upgrade and modernization work. We have completed the refueling and complex overhaul of the first six ships of the Nimitz class, USS Nimitz, CVN-68, USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, CVN-69, USS Carl Vinson, CVN-70, USS Theodore Roosevelt, CVN-71, USS Abraham Lincoln, CVN-72, and USS George Washington, CVN-73. Today, we are performing this work on the seventh ship in the class, USS John C. Stennis, CVN-74. Newport News Shipbuilding also offers inactivation services for nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. In 2018, NNS successfully completed the inactivation of Enterprise, CVN-65, which began in 2013. The NNS-built Enterprise was the world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and the only ship of its class. Our portfolio of in-service aircraft carrier fleet service offerings includes maintenance and modernization work on aircraft carriers at our facilities. We also provide technical and life cycle logistics services wherever the need is around the world. Newport News Shipbuilding also offers inactivation services for nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. In 2018, NNS successfully completed the inactivation of Enterprise, CVN-65, which began in 2013. The NNS-built Enterprise was the world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and the only ship of its class. As sailors aboard the world's largest aircraft carrier USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, served during the ship's first deployment, the training department continues its mission, training sailors for general quarters, introductory damage control qualifications tests, administering exams, coordinating travel to and from the ship, and hosting orientations for the more than 4,000 people aboard the ship. Lieutenant Commander Kristen Hope, Gerald R. Ford's training officer, oversees General Quarters GQ, trainings, which are held at least once every 30 days. Focusing on several different scenarios with a special emphasis on real-world operations, 
the training department maintains mission readiness, guaranteeing that the various training teams are able to complete GQ training evolutions safely within the required time limit. The training department is the lead on the integrated training team, said Hope. We act as the coordinators to ensure that all those teams work together to create the most realistic drill possible. We are also responsible for meeting all of the training needs for each team during that training window. Planning boards for training occur every Monday, which supports and maintains training for everything from small boat operations, to live fire exercises, to firefighting evolutions. These weekly training sessions keep Gerald R. Ford ready for any actual casualty. While the ship is deployed, the training department continues to receive new sailors, and all incoming sailors attend a command orientation. Along with informing sailors about the many services available to them aboard Gerald R. Ford, the command orientation process allows sailors to meet not only subject matter experts, but also the triad. This sets expectations and gives the example for professionalism and excellence while serving on the ship. The training department administers the advancement exams for chief petty officers in January and the exams for junior enlisted twice a year. This large undertaking involves hundreds of sailors, with tests being mailed to Pensacola for grading. Master Chief Operations Specialist Geraldo Anzaldo, Training Department Leading Chief Petty Officer, emphasized the commitment to customer service demonstrated by the training office aboard Gerald R. Ford. In particular, Anzaldo touted the variety of services provided by the Education Services Office. We do our best to maximize the careers of our sailors, ensuring they have the opportunity to meet all the requirements to advance," said Anzaldo. We offer information about ASFOB exams, college programs, and eligibility requirements to become an officer. Sailors looking to further their educational and training goals are well served on board Gerald R. Ford, having 24-hour access to the Gerald and Betty Ford Memorial Library. We have all sorts of study materials, said Anzaldo. We have a library that sailors can use. We're a training department, but more than that we're a customer service department, and I want everyone on board Ford to know that we're here to help. Lieutenant Brandon Washington, Education Services Officer, has a broad background as both an enlisted service member, having served as a yeoman, and now as an officer aboard Gerald R. Ford. His background gives him the insight to lead the training department to serve the advancement goals of all sailors. Since May, we have processed 40 enlisted to officer packages and we have had two sailors make officer, said Washington. There are many paths to obtain degrees and additional training. The Navy now has a new United States Navy Community College program. Eligible sailors can also utilize tuition assistance to take college courses or CLEP exams through the training department. In addition to meeting the educational needs of sailors, the training department coordinates travel for temporary assigned duty, medical leave, emergency leave, and any required government travel. The Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group GRFCSG, is conducting a scheduled deployment in U.S. Naval Forces Europe Africa slash U.S. 6th Fleet Area of Operations, demonstrating the commitment and power projection capability of the Navy's globally deployed force. The GRFCSG provides an inherently flexible naval force capable of deploying across combatant commands to meet emerging missions, deter potential adversaries, reassure allies and partners, enhance security and guarantee the free flow of global commerce. In total, the GRFCSG is deployed with more than 5,000 sailors across all platforms ready to respond globally to combatant commander tasking. Gerald R. Ford is the U.S. Navy's newest and most advanced aircraft carrier. 
As the first-in-class ship of Ford-class aircraft carriers, CVN-78 represents a generational leap in the U.S. Navy's capacity to project power on a global scale. Ford-class aircraft carriers introduced 23 new technologies, including MALs, AAG and advanced weapons elevators. The new systems incorporated onto Ford-class ships are designed to deliver greater lethality, survivability, and joint interoperability with a 20% smaller crew than a Nimitz-class carrier, paving the way forward for naval aviation. After months of extra duty at sea providing protection for Israel, the USS Gerald R. Ford Aircraft Carrier Strike Group will be heading home, the Navy announced Monday. The Ford and its accompanying warships will be replaced by the amphibious assault ship the USS Bataan and its accompanying warships, the USS Mesa Verde and the USS Carter Hall. The three vessels had been in the Red Sea and have been transiting toward the eastern Mediterranean over the last few days. The Ford will sail for home, in the coming days, the U.S. Sixth Fleet, the European-based U.S. Naval Command that's responsible for ships sailing in the Mediterranean, said in a statement. The Ford was sent to the eastern Mediterranean to be within striking distance of Israel since the day after Hamas October 7 attacks. The carrier stayed in the eastern Mediterranean while its accompanying warships had sailed into the Red Sea, where they repeatedly intercepted incoming ballistic missiles and attack drones fired from Houthi-controlled Yemen. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin visited the Ford last month. Since it was extended in the eastern Mediterranean, the Ford and the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier have been part of a two-carrier presence bracketing the Israel-Hamas war, underscoring U.S. concerns that the conflict will widen. The Eisenhower has recently patrolled near the Gulf of Aden, at the mouth of the Red Sea waterway, where so many commercial vessels have come under attack in recent weeks. The Bataan's accompanying warship the Mesa Verde is a transport dock ship, carrying approximately 2,000 Marines from the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit. Those Marines provide forces capable of supporting a wide range of missions, the U.S. 6th Fleet said. The Carter Hall is a dock landing ship, which carries amphibious landing craft and their crews. Both vessels and the Bataan can support rotary aircraft, the Bataan can also carry and support Marine Corps' F-35 vertical takeoff fighter aircraft. Command Climate Without getting the command climate right, nothing else is possible. Our commanding officer has charged the ship's leadership, at every level, to make a significant investment in creating a culture of respect, dignity, and excellence. Safety, the shipyard is a daunting industrial environment, which presents complex safety challenges. To mitigate these risks, Gerald R. Ford is building an empowered and proactive crew and an enduring culture of safety. Training, the more than 40 new or modified systems require innovative training solutions that include coordination with multiple program offices, naval education centers of excellences, and in some cases, training with original equipment manufacturers. As construction of CVN-78 progressed, the shipbuilder made first-of-class type design changes which it will use to update the model before the construction of the remaining vessels of its class. Several of these design changes related to MOL's configuration changes, which required electrical, wiring, and other changes within the ship. The Navy anticipates additional design changes stemming from remaining advanced arresting gear development and testing. According to the Navy, Many of these 19,000 changes were programmed into the construction schedule early on, a result of the government's decision, at contract award, to introduce improvements to the ship's warfare systems during construction, which are heavily dependent on evolving commercial technologies.